Hello, how are you guys doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. And there's been an interesting conversation going on the last couple of days about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and how the respective power between the two consoles might stack up. It's pretty fascinating and I wanted to weigh in a little bit. So the nature of this conversation the past few days has been this theory or really it's technically a rumor that's been going around uh, that suggests that very possibly the Xbox Series X could be a lot more powerful than the PlayStation 5. And what's interesting is if you actually look at the way like forum posts and article headlines are, are titled, it's not so much that the Xbox will be more powerful than PlayStation 5. The running headline is more PlayStation 5 to be weaker than the Xbox because that, that kind of negativity sounds a little bit more dramatic. When you say the negative thing, this console weaker than the other, I think that more people maybe gravitate towards it or that's the intent of people writing these articles as opposed to saying, this is more powerful than that. I think that that's maybe too positive and so it doesn't have that kind of stank attached to it that, you know, saying the PlayStation 5 is weaker actually contains. So an interesting idea, and of course, this is all just weird rumors and theories that's kind of, kind of being put out there through a couple of articles, like I said. But, you know, it potentially carries a lot of weight if any of this is true, because at the end of the day, how the power stacks up between Sony and Microsoft consoles is always interesting. People very much care about them. I don't really care about them because I can enjoy all consoles of all varying levels of power. But the larger gaming community usually cares about this stuff. And I still find a lot of you know, interesting things to take away from it. Like, I don't need any one console to be more powerful than another, but once we know what the most powerful console will be, yeah, it's interesting. And it kind of gives us an idea of where certain things in the generation might actually be heading. And so that's kind of why it's interesting. Now, I actually heard about this story and this rumor through a couple of other people who I know, of course, talking about it like on YouTube and Twitter and whatnot. Uh, John from Spawnwave has talked about it. Rich from Review Tech USA talked about it just yesterday as well. And I even know by coincidence on the Spawncast, they talked about it. I heard some of that conversation. Rich references it in his video as well, which I thought was pretty cool that he did that. And, uh, you know, and just it's just been a thing that people have been discussing. Ooh, is the PlayStation 5 going to be weaker than the Xbox Series X? If so, what does this mean? And yada, yada, yada. That's kind of the conversation. And so... Obviously, as I kind of attempt to sort of break this down and, and discuss what I think about this whole concept, only a concept, it's not a story, it's just a concept and a theory. Um, obviously, most of you who know me and have been following me for a while, you already know that I don't know technical specs. I mean, how many times do I bring it up in conversations about this that I'm not the tech guy, I don't know what, what you know, G, G sync, F vertical, latitude, F, Y, Z things mean, I don't know, you know, LMNOP 516 numbers. I don't know any of that stuff. Gigahertz this or that. It's just, it's not my bag. So the last thing I could really do is discuss what some of these articles have actually put out there in terms of talking about this many teraflops compared to that many teraflops and this much RAM compared to the, that much RAM. And the, you know, the FYGs compared to the 633s. Like, I don't, it just doesn't, I know, I, I know like the, the vaguest understanding of that stuff. I just know... A console is A powerful and a console is B powerful. You know, I can understand that. I can understand the net result of games look this good. Game worlds can be this big. Game AI can be this intelligent. You know, those things, whatever actually comes to me through the final products of the hardware and the games that they run, that is what I understand to somebody who's been gaming for, you know, 36, 37 years of my life. I get the final product. Um, and I've seen every generation switch from the Atari to the NES and the 8-bit era, 1632, the whole, the whole way. So I've experienced the net result of these things quite a bit. So, you know, th there's, there's a couple of articles that I've seen that were even referenced in the videos that I referenced earlier. There's one from Game Rant where they kind of talk about it. Um, even though I'm not going to be able to break this down, I'm going to actually read this little snippet to you. It's the same snippet from this article that Rich even featured in his video about the same topic. Um, and I'll, that way you guys who really understand this stuff have a little bit more to go on than I do. The Game Rant article basically states this about this rumor about the Xbox and the PlayStation 5. They say, one prevalent theory claims that the Xbox Series X's 12 teraflops are intended to be used when describing a direct comparison 
to the Xbox One and Xbox One X. In reality, the Xbox Series X could be nine teraflops, but we'll use a new GPU architecture that's around 1.25 times more efficient. As such, its nine teraflops could be considered equivalent to 12 teraflops in direct comparison to base platforms. Right. So yeah, there is plenty of more information in that and other articles, which I will link below for you guys who are tech heads and understand this stuff to sift through. Um, but that's the general idea. And so, you know, the whole thing is something about comparing the Xbox to prior generations and then, you know, rumors and leaks about the PlayStation 5's potential power also maybe being outdated. So it might not be the most accurate or up-to-date information on the PlayStation 5. And so... All this, you know, all this time just kind of summing this whole the whole thing up and getting to the actual thing here. Basically, it's all rumor, and the stuff about the Xbox might just be only when comparing it to prior generation Xboxes, and then the PlayStation 5 stuff that's out there is potentially from an old build of the PS5, and it might actually be more powerful with the more modern build that might actually accurately represent the PlayStation 5 that will launch next year. And so this could all mean nothing, or it could mean something. So now here's where we get to the good stuff. This is the stuff that I can really talk about. Let's just break this down to like the most basic and primitive fundamentals here. One console will be more powerful and more capable than the other. That's all I care about. That's all I understand and all I want to talk about because then we get to just talk about the business, the perception, how gamers react to it, what has the potential to sell more, which games are going to run better on the other. That stuff is more interesting to me than breaking down the components and the clock speeds and all these different things. Um, and if we were to run with this rumor for the sake of this conversation, and let's just pretend, we're only pretending, I'm not picking sides, I'm not stating anything as fact, so everyone understands that, okay? I'm not stating it as fact. Let's pretend that this rumor is true. And let's say next holiday, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X launch, and the Xbox is more powerful than the PlayStation 5. It's basically the reverse of what we saw last generation where the PS4 was more capable than the Xbox One. And so games were running better, games were looking better, the frame rates were almost always superior on the PlayStation 4. And because of that, plus the connect and the pricing of the Xbox One, the Xbox One was never able to make up any ground on the PlayStation 4. Because pretty much right out of the gate, everyone knew and understood the PlayStation 4 was the better running, better performing, better looking machine when it came to your games. You know, mostly just the diehard Xbox fans and the people who maybe had the money to own every console on launch day were the ones picking up the Xbox for the first like maybe close to year. Once they dropped the Kinect, I do think that things changed. And that's also when I decided to pick up an Xbox One, by the way, is when they dropped the Kinect and dropped the price by like $100 or $200, whatever I paid for it at that time. Um, but because of the power difference, and again, this is why this is interesting to me for me to talk about, even though I don't really care which one is more powerful personally, because I don't, I don't care too much about power. What's interesting about it is I do think that the advantage in power the PlayStation had last generation is one of the main most contributing factors to it having a huge head start off the starting line and get, got it to the point where it just kept going and going and the Xbox could never catch up. And I truly believe people were buying PlayStations more than Xboxes just because the PlayStation was known to be more powerful. And if you think about it, when you compare it to this potential current new generation, it's also interesting to note that what we learned with this last generation, PS4 and Xbox, obviously comparing Nintendo and the Wii U and the Switch is a different part of the conversation because these machines, they didn't all launch at the same time the way the PlayStation and Xbox did and will again this next year. And because Nintendo throughout the Wii U and the Switch generation wasn't chasing the best graph. I mean, I talk. How much did I talk about graphics and the and Nintendo on the last video? So they weren't doing that with the Switch or the Wii U before it. So they weren't trying to be as much a part of the power conversation. I think they might do that sometime in the future, obviously. Um, but maybe this time, maybe next time. Anyway, the point is, what we learned with the launch of the PlayStation and Xbox One is that people really aren't always that dedicated to their platform of choice because. There's no doubt that the platform of choice last generation was the Xbox 360, uh, the prior generation was the Xbox 360 over the PlayStation 3 for the majority of that generation. Obviously things leveled out 
quite a bit by the end, and they were pretty much neck and neck. But the vast majority of the generation, the Xbox 360 had a very healthy lead. It was the console of choice for most people playing their third-party games and their non-Nintendo stuff. You know, I obviously was gaming on the Wii and the Wii U in those days alongside my PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. But when you look at how the PlayStation and Xbox battle existed in the, you know, 7th gen and in this current 8th gen, we saw the Xbox 360 being more successful and more popular for most of its life over the PS3. Then once the PS4 launched, because it was known to just be the better machine overall, obviously a lot of those people who were diehard 360 gamers had to have jumped over to the PlayStation 4 just to give it that significant lead and that ability to just dominate the Xbox throughout the entire life of the consoles. That only happened because people did jump ship from 360 to PlayStation 4. And so what that tells us, if you think about it, is if we reverse the power dynamic again, going into next holiday with the PS5 and the Series X, that a lot of the PlayStation 4 people might also be willing to yet again jump initially back over to Xbox's side. I think that really what last generation told us is we can expect a lot of people to just kind of go back and forth to whatever console fits their needs and whatever one is more powerful and gets to boast better performing games over the other. It's going to make a difference for people who care about that stuff and focus in on it and maybe are more dedicated to only one or two platforms and maybe not all the platforms. Like I'm an all platform guy. I love all my, 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 my machines. I love Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation. I own them all. I play them all and it's great, but not everybody does that. And so if you're only picking and choosing between one, I think that we could see a lot of people jump ship to the Xbox Series X if in fact it turns out to be more powerful. Now, of course, if this turns out to be not true and the PlayStation 5 ends up being more powerful than the Xbox, man, that is going to be interesting. Um, I will say this, I think Xbox is going to kill it next generation. No matter what happens, no matter what place they fall in the race between Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, even if they're third place again, whatever, I think they're gonna make a great machine. I think they are gonna have a ton of games and I don't think that they're gonna drop the ball the way they did on the Xbox One. I think that they are gonna learn so hard from the mistake of the Xbox One. It's why they bought up all these studios. These studios are gonna make an incredible lineup of exclusive Xbox Series X content and franchises that you can't play on Nintendo or Sony. I know that they're going to do that and it is going to help. I know that it's also gonna be crazy powerful even if it doesn't match the PlayStation 5. So I just wanna state that I, th I think they're gonna be a great competitor next generation. But if the PlayStation 5 turns out to yet again be the more powerful, more capable console compared to the Xbox, I think it is gonna still do some damage to Xbox because that would make for two generations in a row Sony is just going to be dominating them. And I think that what it will do is create a bit of a perception in, you know, the layman's mind about PlayStation and Xbox. And Xbox will become known as just, oh, those are the guys that are never quite as good as PlayStation, you know? And obviously, I mean, I keep bringing Nintendo into it because that's what I do. I love Nintendo and they're my favorite company. It's just, um, they're not releasing right now their consoles in tandem with Sony and Microsoft. So it's so hard to include them in this part of the conversation. Once their next machine comes out that I think is going to be maybe hopefully a little bit more tied in tow with Sony and Microsoft, whatever that is, switch to home console, handheld only, whatever it is. Um, that'll be really interesting to talk about it. But right now, we already know, you know, PS5, Xbox Series X, they're launching at the same time next year. So, um, yeah, if, if Xbox is always known as the company playing second fiddle to the other guys, it's going to hurt them. Even if, even if they make a great machine, which I expect them to do, I think they're going to heavily rely on Game Pass. They're going to heavily rely on digital content and digital gaming and downloads and purchases and obviously streaming with Project X Cloud. But the thing has a disk drive. Hallelujah. So they're still going to be doing something in the physical space as well. But I think that digital stuff could also really help them sell and be successful and popular. But you know, as much as I think it's a little bit shallow for so much of the gaming public to be into just what's the most powerful, we have to admit, even if you or I don't think that that makes a, a console good by default, a lot of people do think that. The majority of the video game buying public who spends their dollar and their money on gaming consoles and games, 
they care about it. And if they just know PlayStation's more powerful, they're going to buy the PlayStations and they're not going to buy the Xboxes. If they know the Xbox is more powerful, as I discussed, I think a lot of them are going to buy Xboxes and not PlayStations, at least right off the bat. And so the launch numbers will be skewed based on who I think will probably be more powerful. And then it'll be up to how they market and create games and, and library lineups throughout their following years to see if they can kind of, you know, shake the balance there. We have to remember, going back even another generation, the weakest of the three, the PlayStation 2, which did not have the power compared to the GameCube or Xbox, far and away was the best-selling console. In fact, the best-selling console of all time. So we've seen evidence to where the most powerful sells the most because of the power with the PlayStation 4, but we've also seen evidence to when the least powerful sells the most because of the games and the library, which was the PlayStation 2, or even the Nintendo Wii. I mean, how could I not talk about the Nintendo Wii? It wasn't even it wasn't even high definition compared to the 360 and the PlayStation 3, and it wiped the floor with those consoles, just being standard definition and having a weird, goofy, waggly controller because it was innovative, it had a cool controller people had never used, and it had great games, it had Nintendo's games, and it had a couple of third-party gems. And so for the first couple of years, it maintained that and it destroyed the competition. And so, you know, it could really go either way to be fair, but I do think going into the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, this is going to be a situation where coming out of the launch gate, I think the most powerful will have the most impact and sell the most and have the most positive buzz and press and PR for it, you know? I think that whichever console is not the most powerful, as long as they don't run into the situation that the Xbox One did when it launched, where it was like, I remember it was like really buggy, the UI didn't work right, it was crashing, it wasn't, it was running games worse than it was intended to still just because it was buggy, like the whole thing was just a big mess right out of the gate. So if the weaker of the next consoles doesn't have that problem and it's still incredibly efficient, I think it'll still do okay. That is gonna help it not maybe like dig a hole that it can't come out of. Cause that is what happened with the Xbox One. It dug that hole and it couldn't get itself out. And so, I don't know, this whole thing is really interesting. You know, this was just a big long-winded conversation I had about a rumor and a theory that's out there and on a couple of websites. There's a couple of article headlines out there about it. But you know, some people who really understand tech specs have talked about it. They've broken it down from the technical side. I wanted to add my sort of two cents from the business side and just the gamer side. Like just thinking about the games, what the games will be like, how they might sell, how to gauge people's interest based on what may or may not be more powerful. That's that. That's the information and conversations I can have and I can give to you guys because I can't talk about the technical stuff. And I've always made sure to be honest about the fact that I don't know or understand it. And I've never pretended to be a tech head or to understand things that I don't understand because I'm not really ashamed that I don't understand these things because I know what I do understand. Games and I love to analyze the business side. That stuff works for my brain. So this is what I think. What do you guys think about this? It's a rumor, it's speculation. What do you think will be the most powerful? Do you think it'll make a difference at launch if one is more powerful than the other? Or do you think it's not gonna make a difference? Maybe it won't. I mean, anything is possible. So whatever you think, talk about it below. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. I'll catch you next time on another video.